This part I did not realize until I heard them this morning. According to, it was Mike Golick Jr., actually, who brought this up. Um, there's no teeth to the mound rule, meaning the, the you know visits to the mound rule, meaning there's no punishment outlined in the rule. You know, because like I just said, if it, 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 with the pitch uh, pitch clock, if the pitcher didn't have, you know, it wasn't in his windup and ready to go in 20 seconds, it's a ball. And if the batter isn't ready, it's a strike. Uh, but they haven't said anything. What happens if a shortstop comes up and makes an extra visit to the mound? What happens in the ninth inning and we're all out, all out of our six, you know, mound visits mm-hmm. that we're allowed and the catcher wants to go and chat it up, chat up the pitcher to make sure they're clear on the signs because they got crossed up. Or maybe they feel like the guy on second is stealing signs, so we got to go out and, and make the change. Um, what Golick Jr. said on Golick and Wingo this morning, and we hope you listen to that every day right here on ESPN 106.5 The Ticket. Uh, I think they're doing a great job, by the way. A lot of people thought the end of the world was coming when Mike and Mike uh, uh, was disbanded, but I think they're doing a great job. But, but Jim, according to what Golick Jr. said, is there were, there was no punishment outlined that that a manager or a catcher or whomever who wants to come out or a pitching coach and come out and talk if they've already reached their six mound visit limit and they come out, the umpire can say, hey, you're not allowed to do that. And the catcher can say, yeah, what are you going to do about it? Right. No, because that's true. There's no, there's no teeth to it. It's no, what, what is it? An out? Is there a, is there a fine coming? Is the punishment going to be baseball related to the game at hand? Or is it going to be um, financial because you violated what we said when we said six? Because they, they established no, they established no, uh, you know, repercussions for breaking the rule. And I, I've never seen anything quite like no, that. No, and you're completely correct about it. Again, I found the ESPN.com article on this one from yesterday that I was referencing because they have a little uh, uh, picture of the actual, like, legalese of yeah. this rule itself. And nowhere in this... Does it mention anything about, well, what happens if they go over their six? <laughs> because, an ump, because the umpire, because this is how it's done at the, high, at, our, at the high school level that I'm somewhat familiar with, when those happen, I'm supposed to take out my little scorecard and mark by the team that, okay, mound visit, okay, mound right. visit. And, but, they're, but even doing that, here in the major league one, there, there's nothing outlining about, you know, what happens if this is their seventh visit and it's the ninth inning or something. Happening. There's nothing happening. Yeah. I mean, if I'm a catcher and I've already, we've already the, had all, our six. All that most the umpire can do in this situation is go up there. And say, get back there. And get, say, well, no, you're over your limits. you got to make a pitching change. But as as you're pointing out, as Gold Jr. point out, there's no actual enforcement. Right. Technically, the teams could say to the umpire, and you'll do, you and what army are going right. to make exactly. me. Technically, if I'm a catcher, they could. And I want to go out and, and, and clear, clear, you right. know, clarify the signs with my pitcher late in the game. And I'm already past my six. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to say, hey, you can't do that. I'm going to say, I'll just be a minute. I'll be right back. I'll just be a couple seconds. Because what are you going to do? You're not going to you, – you can't eject me. And, 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 and if you can, it better be in that rule. What do you said? You're looking at it right now, the actual legal uh, – The actual legalese kind of the, of the yeah. language of it Does right it now. Does it say a player who does this nope. shall be ejected? Nope. No, nope. it says nothing Does about. Does it say a manager? No. Nope. Does it say we're gonna uh, we're gonna uh, uh, give the give the uh, batting team an extra out <laughs> this inning? No, nope. it, it says nothing <laughs> about what the punishment for someone. It lays out uh, uh, what they constitute as a mound visit for this purpose. And by the way, the extra inning one um, is uh, every inning an extra inning. By the way, you get one. You get one. So, so it's not yeah. just. The, the fullness of extra innings, it's you get one in the 10th, one in the 11th, and yada, yada, yada. That's just ridiculous. That's too. ridiculous, too, by the way. But, yeah, again, there's nothing in here about enforcement and what game. would have to be done if a team is violating it. So wow. it sounds like all that the umpire can do is go out there like like they do when there's a mound visit going on, and they eventually see the umpire going up there where he's really in the past been telling him, okay, your time's up, got everybody get back. All he could do is go up there and say, you're over your limit, you have to make a pitching change now. But technically speaking, Golick Jr. is right. There is no teeth to this. Uh, the team and the manager and whoever could just technically, if they want to, look at the umpire and tell him to get bet. I want my pitch clock. First of all, if you're going to have this rule, have some teeth to it. Have uh, You have yes. to lay out the punishments. They can't just say you're out of here and right. eject somebody for taking that seventh visit to the mound. They can't do it because it wasn't lined, you know, right. laid out in the uh, in the agreement. Uh, and, I, and I want my pitch clock. Uh, I'm reading from... Um, CBS sports writer Mike Ax, uh, Axisa, Axis, uh, something like that. Anyway, he said it's not gone forever, the pitch clock idea, uh, because MLB and Manfred have been pushing this hard 
uh, and that's not going to stop. They've merely tabled the talks for the rest of this year. It doesn't mean they won't bring it you know, next year. It's not like they've just killed the idea. So that's good news. Although, you know what, why wait? Let's get this done now. Uh, but he also writes, keep in mind that the 20-second pitch clock has been used at the double and triple-A levels for three seasons now. An increasing number of big league pitchers pitched with a pitch clock in the minors. So it wouldn't even require a major adjustment for them. They are used to it. Right. The now, younger the you are, the more used to it you're going to be. Yep. Yeah, the older veterans won't be used to it. But guess what else? There is this thing called spring bleeping training games. They're going to play 30 games roughly in which they can take the time to get used to the pitch clock and having to move at a certain pace. And those start at the end of this week, by the by. I know. How about that? The MLBPA won this battle. There won't be a pitch clock in 2018. Expect MLB and Manfred to revisit the topic after this season. I certainly hope that is the case. By the way, I got a text message from a listener named Andy uh, who says, just limit the number of times a batter can step out of the box and readjust his batting gloves to one per at-bat. That would save about 90 minutes a game. And well, just do it. Man, then just do what you're really saying. You don't want, you're doing this for Mike Hargrove because you don't want anyone else to have the human <laughs> rain delayed <laughs> nickname. That's what this is all about. But, but Conspiracy, is, you know, I tell you. I, I would support that, too. Just as much as I would support the pitcher has to be ready in 20 seconds, the batter, absolutely. You, can, you must stay in the box for your entire bat save for one time. One time you yeah. can regather yourself. And kidding aside, and, that, 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 that's a great point. Kidding well, aside. And, and, and maybe you allow a little latitude if there's, you know, some chin music or something. If somebody steps out after two or three pitches and just kind of takes a couple of cuts and, okay, that's your one time stepping out. And then he gets one buzzed by his chin at some point in the at-bat. Excuse me. To me, he has my permission to step out and dust himself off and get sure. himself you know, get his get his blood pressure back down a little bit, slow his heart rate down, and get ready for the rest of the at bat because there are some some circumstances. Yep, uh, that should be considered there. But uh, yeah, uh, this is this is frustrating. Uh, I thought baseball was going to do something very very exciting here, and instead they've done nothing. And the one thing that they did do, while still being a big nothing burger, uh, is is unable to be enforced because they have no teeth to yep. the no punishment outline. By the way, speaking the of these other rules, did you catch the other sub uh, rule change that they're putting in? Because we're all focused on the mound visits and the uh, 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 no pitch clock thing. Did you catch this one? Which one? Uh, I'll just read this paragraph uh, uh, from the ESPN uh, uh, com article from yesterday. To assuage players' concerns about Stein sign stealing, I, I, I love the clandestine nature of this rule, by the way, in that humor way. MLB will install new t- Telephone lines from dugouts to video replay rooms. MLB said the lines will be monitored and a person familiar with the decision told the AP all the conversations on the lines will be recorded. They're going all CIA tap your phone style. Did you catch this one? I, I did see something about it, but I didn't read all of the the, the details and, uh, and uh, the, you know, the legalese, as you th- say, they were in it. So tell you what, Jim, let's hit that again a little bit more on the other side. I want to get a bottom of the hour sports center. Um, also, next half hour, I want to talk more about uh, Adam Silver and some potential changes on the NBA side when it comes to the playoffs and seeding of teams. Could we see two Western teams or two Eastern teams in an NBA Finals? Adam Silver says kind of, sort of, yes. And we want to get your thoughts on it, too. 866-240-1065. 866-240-1065. For now, let's get wild. ESPN 1065 The Ticket presents The Wild Stat of the Day Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings Wings, Beer, Sports Buffalo Wild Wings Wild Stat of the Day Today let's talk about rebounders Some of the best in the game Including one currently playing in the D In NBA history there have been only four players To lead the league in rebounding At at the All-Star break For three straight seasons Those names are Will Chamberlain Hall of Famer Moses Malone Hall of Famer Dwight Howard, uh, multi-time All-Star, borderline, probably not a Hall of Famer. And, yes, indeed, Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond of the Pistons leads the league right now 15.7 boards per game, which is a career high. And if he continues at that rate for the whole season, he'll be the first player since Dennis Rodman in 96-97 to average more than 15.5 boards for an entire season. That is your Buffalo Wild Wings Wild Stat of the Day. Sports are coming. Let's get you on the radio next right here on the ticket. Be part of the extravaganza right now by calling 866-240-1065. Now back to the Bob France extravaganza on 1065 The Ticket. Back indeed we are on ESPN 1065 The Ticket where we are. And will remain Toledo's sports leader. Yeah, so if you've got thoughts on the pace of play thing that we were just discussing, I'd love to hear from you because uh, this is the half hour to get in. Right now, well, the next 21 minutes anyway before uh, top of the hour. 
because coming up um, at about 4.10, after the top of the hour, uh, local sports center, Von Losing going to join us from MaisonBrew.com. Kush, how come we don't give more love to Michigan basketball? I don't know. We should. Our sister station is their affiliate, but we're doing it today, doggone it. <laughs> we talked to Paul Keels on a regular basis, obviously, uh, from Ohio State, of course, and give some love to the Buckeyes. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll be having Michigan people on on a weekly basis between now and whenever they're done in the tournament, because they're still going there, too. Yeah, no, well, no question. And, you know, especially since they're playing way better basketball. I mean, they just beat Ohio State. The Buckeyes have now lost two in a row to Purdue and uh, Michigan, and uh, we should give some love to that. You know, we spend time talking Mac all the time. In fact, we talk with Todd Kowalczyk, the coach of UT basketball, once a week. We talk with Michael Huger, the coach at BG basketball, once a week, or in his stead if he's out on recruiting trips or whatnot. Uh, we'll talk to Todd Walker, which will be the case today at about 440. But we just have been conspicuous, I think, in our uh, – uh, negligence, I, I guess, of, uh, of Michigan basketball. And you know what? The Wolverines are quietly putting together a nice little late-season run here to get yeah. a really good seed uh, in the Big Ten tournament and then obviously pushing forward to the NCAAs, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've been a ranked team for weeks on end now. Uh, they might not be as sexy of a story for this season the way Ohio State might be, considering nobody expected, including us, anything from them but they've been a consistently ranked or just about ranked team all year and therefore depending on what bracketologist you're looking at i've seen them anywhere between six and nine on any line they'll make the tournament so no yeah we can, we're going to talk some more Michigan over the next couple of weeks no doubt yeah, about they, it they, if they win their last two and then do a you know a nice deep run into the big 10 uh, uh, tournament I think they could increase that number to uh, to a top five seed in, in one of the regions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if they go to something like the Big Ten title game, particularly if they finish in the top four and go to the quarters instead of the, the second round, that always makes a difference because, you know, when you play back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back days or whatever in one of these conference tournaments, now, yeah, that might help them. If they go pretty far, they could bump that seed line up a I'm couple gonna, more. I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to use this as a, the main reason I brought up Michigan basketball is to promote the interview we're going to do at 410. Uh, Von Lozen, MaisonBrew.com, is going to talk about the Wolverines' win over Ohio State, maybe preview the um, Big Ten tournament, see what kind of a chance they have, or, you know, is this still Sparty Town uh, now that Purdue has uh, kind of struggled a bit? Ohio State has dropped off uh, as Michigan State. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use this now, though, as a segue into an entirely different topic. Um, just two nights ago, or would it have that been? Sunday, I guess it would have been. Sunday night, yep. No, it wasn't Sunday because I was watching some of the NBA All-Star game. But at some point on The All-Star Sunday, game was Sunday. What's that? The All-Star game was Sunday. I know. That's what I'm saying. There's, so what I'm about to say, well, it couldn't have been then because I was watching oh, the All-Star game. I got you. I got you. Okay. But at some point over the weekend, I saw again, because, you know, they replay these 30 for 30s from time to time. Yep. I saw the 30 for 30 on Fab Five. That's a great one. I DVR'd that so I can watch it again at my leisure. Well, I watched it again, and um, it was just kind of funny. Something. St- First of all, it really, really saddens me that those guys, you know, Chris Webber and Jalen Rose and Juwan Howard, that they're still kind of at odds. Well, basically everybody's at odds with Chris Webber because he's the only one who won't admit right. to his mistakes um, as a very, very, very young man and taking that money from Ed Martin, some $280,000, and that's the source of contention. You know, Jalen admits he took some things, but they were much, much smaller. Uh, and everybody has kind of admitted their role. Ed Martin can't because he's passed on. But um, everybody's kind of admitted their role except for Chris. And that has been a source of contention because his was the largest transgression and thus the reason why the Wolverines were forced, after the investigation was concluded, to vacate all of their wins, including – the national championship game appearance, Final Four, the the Fab Five, you know, legacy was essentially wiped out. Banners gone from Chrysler Arena, right? And that is um, continuing to be a, a source of, you know, disagreement and tension between them. And it makes me sad because they ought to be able to look back at those days and really, you know, kind of revel in how they changed college basketball because they did. Yes, they did. In a lot of ways. And I loved every second of it, by the way. Honestly, I, I thought time. about it. I thought about it, and I wasn't as big a fan in the moment. And that's probably stems from that famed regional final overtime game in their first run, where they played the Buckeyes. But looking back on it, I, I'm actually mad that I wasn't a bigger fan of them. Well, you know what's interesting, Jim? <laughs> um, I was more of a fan of them, in the same way that I was always more of a fan of the Showtime Lakers, as opposed to their nemesis. Celtics, which was Duke in the Michigan uh, saga, yeah, and uh, you know with the Fab Five, right, and the Celtics, 
and and it's weird. I I liked Flash. I liked Flair.